You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Now, most of you know Kathy and I are in, of course, as it says in the show open, sunny South Florida. We're in Ron DeSantis's free Florida. And Florida is a better place today than it was yesterday because President Trump last night came back home to Mar-a-Lago. Oh, wonderful. And this is President Trump's first time back home to Mar-a-Lago since the break-in over oh, yeah. a month ago. And right. yeah, and he posted some things on True Social about it. So I wanted to read this. This this is really a terrible thing. Listen to this. This is on uh, uh, Truth Social last night, and this is President Trump's words. I'm reading directly from – so all of the next part is a quote of President Trump on Truth Social till I tell you the quote's over, okay? Arrived in Florida last night and had a long and detailed chance to check out the scene of yet another government crime. The FBI's raid and break-in of my home, Mar-a-Lago. I guess they don't think there's a Fourth Amendment anymore. And to them, there isn't. In any event, after what they have done, the place will never be the same. It was ransacked and in far different condition than the way I left it. Many agents, and they didn't even take off their shoes in my bedroom. Nice. With three exclamation marks oh. after nice, unquote. Um, okay. He also truthed. Um Thank you to the many people who greeted me last night on my way home from the airport to yep. Mar-a-Lago. I'll never forget the great people of this country. Matthew. Yeah. You know, here's, here's the thing, people, okay, about this. I don't know how many of you have had your home or your car broken mm -hmm. into, okay? Um, I've had a couple instances about this, okay? My parents years ago had their home broken into. OK, after I had moved out, I didn't live there at the time. So I haven't experienced, thankfully, my home being broken into, no. you know, but my parents had their home broken into while they were at work and it was ransacked. They did terrible things. They poured coffee grinds in the computer tower on their PC. I remember that. They put food in the microwave, sausages, and burned them and then put them all over the bed in my parents' it was bedroom, really bizarre. it was the, it was it was just it was trashed, and there were things stolen, and yeah, it, and it just the house just never really felt the same, not yeah. for a long, long time, and really not until my parents like remodeled the house to a certain degree. They put in new floors, they painted. They, they didn't they didn't remodel because of the break in, but they, it just didn't feel safe and comfortable at home because their most intimate areas had been violated, include their, including their bedroom, the closet, and their dresser. And I, I'm sure there's some people out there listening in the audience who have had something similar happen. And this, in a way, what happened to President Trump at Mar-a-Lago would be worse than, say, your home like my parents was broken into and ransacked. And let me tell you why. The, the, the people that broke into my parents' home, they were criminals. And there, there, there were people on the lookout for them, okay? They didn't get them. There were some other break-ins in the neighborhood. I, I, I heard that they arrested someone. They were high school kids. I, I don't know if they were the actual ones that went to my parents' house. They weren't able to prove it. But that was illegal, right? And you knew a crime had been committed. In this instance of President Trump at Mar-a-Lago, they went in. They went through their drawers. They went through Melania's underwear drawer and closet, going through her clothes. And they did this with a document that said it was legal. Now, listen, I know a lot of you listening will say, well, you know, he had classified documents. I don't understand why everyone does not love Donald Trump, and I truly mean that, okay? I'm not being joking. I love Donald Trump, and I don't know why everyone doesn't love Donald. I know why the political people don't in Washington. I'm talking about any liberals that might be listening to this program. He's a great man. But you may say, oh, you know, he had classified documents. Donald Trump was president of the United States of America. He's going to be again in 2024, but he was president of the United States of America. This isn't some spy who was stealing documents to make a few bucks to sell secrets to Russia. I know you'll say that he was. That's absurd. He's the, you know, Donald Trump is the wealthiest man ever to be president of the United States. 
And the idea that the wealthiest man ever to be president would be the one that would sell state secrets is ridiculous. It's not even credible to say that. It's, it's just a it ridiculous, ridiculous statement. But everything the left have accused him of is ridiculous. Yeah. They have no proof of anything. They just make wild accusations uh, with, with zero proof. They, and the liberals believe every single one of them. And they believe all the, 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 the most horrible things that you can say about Trump. They believe it. They don't care. And if you, if you came to them and said this is at, like with the Mueller thing, that it was not true, they proved it was not true, you know what they'll tell you? Well, I still believe it. I mean, they believe what they want to believe. These are sick people. Well, you know, those of you that are not on board with Donald Trump, okay, I, ask yourself why. You know, the Washington politicians of both parties, I mean, really ask yourself why, and don't come up with some knee-jerk thing, right? Think about this. Yeah. Obviously, the Republicans and the Democrats have joined forces. That's why when you know uh, Biden gave that speech at Independence Hall in Philadelphia a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. and he talked about mainstream Republicans and MAGA Republicans, that tells you that the Democrats and the Republicans have joined forces against Donald Trump and those of us who and support him. And we know him. why they don't like him. But uh, Well, think okay, about so this. So why don't you? Think about these people that have joined forces, the Republican establishment with the Democrat Party. They are at polar opposites on everything and have been for 150 years, right? Pro-life, gay rights, gay marriage, right? Abortion issues, uh, issues of taxation, issues of foreign policy, whether or not climate change. There is not an – I want you to think about this. There is not an issue facing us, even the content of television and the internet. There's not a decision facing us that the Republicans and Democrats have ever agreed on when it came to integration of the public schools and busing, everything. They've all, and, and now all of a sudden, the two parties have gotten together and they're working together for a political means. Doesn't that set off some alarm bells? And, and those of you out there that aren't MAGA people, does it, don't you wonder what could – what what has happened in the past? I'll tell you what. Even 9-11 didn't bring the Republicans and Democrats together. It, a lot of people, if you, don't, if you weren't living through it as an adult, you don't understand. When 9-11 happened, it's a scary thing, right? Uh, the, the few days after 9-11, like, the, like when you got to like the 13th, 14th, um, Mario Cuomo – who's the, the, the father who was one time the governor of New York before, you know, the past governor, whose his son was governor, you know, and then Fredo and all that. Mario Cuomo, Bill Clinton, and other Democrats, like on the 13th, 14th, 15th, after 9-11, said, well, what did we do that drove these people to knock down these buildings? They were talking about, well, you know, poverty in the Middle East is what drove yeah. them to – remember all that talk? And now they say climate change. Well, the, the thing about They're that – insane. Now, when Bill Clinton and um, uh, Cuomo, the, the father of Cuomo, Mario Cuomo, and other Democrats started saying that a couple of days after 9-11, there was a huge backlash and they stopped talking that way. I remember Chelsea Clinton wrote an article. Yep. I want to say it was for – it might have been for Vanity Fair. Probably. Che- Chelsea Clinton was in Manhattan on 9-11, and she wrote an article. I think it was for Vanity Fair. If it wasn't Vanity Fair, it was another well-known publication. She, and this was the first time we heard Chelsea Clinton like speak her own mind about something as an adult. Yeah. And she wrote an article about her experience on 9-11. And I remember in the beginning, she was talking about walking down the street and seeing people running towards her that were covered in all the dust and everything from the trade centers. And she said this. This is what Chelsea Clinton wrote in this article. I couldn't believe it. I I talked about it at the time on the air. She said, I was thinking about how these people were affected by the Bush tax cuts. That's how political she was. We're talking about on 9-11. They just have a completely different perspective because the reason they have a different perspective is because these things that happen affect them very differently than they affect the average person. And they live a very privileged life. And they don't have the same problems we do. So yeah. they don't they don't see the world the way we see the world. Well, they see yeah. it from a very privileged point of well, view. Well, the point I'm making though, and is, so they see things is, that they and and they 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 hate America, and they love to blame America for all the world's yeah. problems. Look what's happening with the Queen when she died, and all these liberals. It took them two seconds 
to bash her and colonialism that had nothing to do with her. Well, let me give, let me tell you the I point mean, just I'm, I'm making, people. okay? Because this uh, uh, these extreme views, Democrats and Republicans did not even come together after 9-11. CNN and ABC News sent out a memorandum to their reporters that they were not to wear American flags yeah. on television. CNN sent a memo out to their reporters and said, CNN is not an American news outlet. It's an international news Ridiculous. outlet and don't have too many pro-American attitudes on 9-11 coverage in New York. Fox News was a different Fox News then than it is today. They had American flags all over the place all the time. So 9-11 did not bring the Republican and the Democrat establishment together against those who attacked right. us. But Donald Trump has united people that were still divided after the attacks on America of September 11th. I want you guys to think about that. Does that even make sense? It doesn't no. even make sense. And the reason that they're against him is because he is, he, he is a threat to it, their power – but the reason they want power is so they can have all their schemes going like this endless stream of money going to Ukraine or going to this program or that program or some deal with, with China on trade. It's all about money, power too, but mainly money. And it, those of you out there that are Democrats, maybe you're a democratic socialist or something, maybe you're just a Democrat, you really should think about it. Democrats and Republicans couldn't come together on September 12th, 2001, but they're together now against Donald Trump. That, that is really something I think puts in perspective how crazy it is, this it is Trump crazy. derangement. And ask yourself, what allegations have they made against Trump that they've actually been able to prove? Yeah. And I know you're going to believe what you want to believe because of your own personal feelings, but – you know, I think that the fact that all these things have been said about him and none of them have been proven, like really proven, I think that says a lot about who you're listening to and what you're choosing to believe. And if you want to live in a fantasy world and believe what you want, I'd rather believe the truth than what, you know, the, than my own personal truth. I'd rather believe the truth truth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I hope we've given some of you out there that aren't on board with Trump something to think about and right. consider. And I know- Everything we just talked about the last few minutes, a lot of you have some knee-jerk reaction. Oh, Trump's this, Trump's that. Think about it, though, hard, like later, tomorrow. And think about your life and your business. And I'm not talking about COVID because that had nothing to do with Trump. And that was a situation no, nobody was prepared for. And I personally think he handled it well. But aside from that, okay, that's a whole other issue that he had nothing to do with that happening. Think about your life, your, the cost of food, the cost of gas, your businesses, you know, things like that, um, all the people getting jobs and all this stuff. Think about how the country was going, um, you know, like just do some introspection here and, and think about that. And when you have somebody who the swamp, like Brian said, is so vehemently against, you have to, in making up stories horrible stories. You have to ask yourself, well, why are they doing this? Why are they so hell bent on bringing this and destroying this man and keeping him from getting back in the White House? I mean, yeah. you know, that's the, that says a lot, like you said. Well, it, it looks like you were showing me, Kathy, yeah. that the British embassy in Washington yes, is, there will be is in, having a special event for the queen. This Wednesday. This is interesting. Yes, is this Wednesday, and this is being reported in Esquire, which is a very liberal publication. Um, it says here, uh, all living, all five living former presidents, Donald Trump, Barack Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, and Jimmy Carter, have been invited to a service of Thanksgiving for the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in collaboration with the British Embassy at the Washington National Cathedral. The event, which is set to feature an honor guard by the Queen's Color Squadron, a unit of the Royal Air Force, will be held Wednesday, September 21st, according to Sky News. So I am sure Trump will be there, and I hope he goes, because oh, yeah. they would love nothing more than for him to not show up. But I wonder if they're going to do this thing I don't think so. But, you know, when they had the Kennedy honors and the people that were honored said they wouldn't go because Trump wasn't there. And Trump didn't well, go, okay. which he should have gone. This is okay. – He better go to this. This is – oh, he will. Don't worry about Trump. I know he loves He'll, the queen. Uh, Trump will be there. Okay. 
to my knowledge, this is the first event with mm. the other presidents all that President together. Trump has been invited to. The other presidents, they, yeah. they've, you know, former presidents have had this, this elite fraternity club for years, mm -hmm. and they have had some events that President Trump was not invited to. And President Trump is going to go. You know he's going to go. He's, yeah, you know. He just flew home, now, too. Well, that's okay. He's got his own plane. That's true. He doesn't have to borrow one from Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> types. True. You know, he's got his own plane. Exactly. So the thing, the thing to wonder, though, is what will the other presidents do? The, exactly. Will they turn down the invitation because President Trump is going to be there? And, you know, the Brits – and how will they we'll, seat We'll everybody. seat them, yeah. not by their request, but like a, a lot of people are invited to this. They'll, they'll seat the presidents all together. Will they refuse so? to sit with Donald oh Trump and gosh. Melania? I can't imagine I hope this is on TV. So selfish. Oh, yes, I definitely want to I really this. hope this is on TV. Well, if it is, if it's broadcast, you know it'll be on Fox News. This is one thing you'll be <laughs> watching they, about the Queen Because they've covered Bones. everything. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. That's now, a big one. You know Donald Trump will going to go. He, he loves the United Kingdom. He loves England. He loves the Queen. Well, yeah, his mom. Got a lot of respect mom, for her. Uh, was Scottish, grew up in Scotland. Yeah. No, he'll be and there. And was a big lover of the Queen, and he said they had pictures of the Queen in their house. You know, he was born probably in, like, uh, I would say the late 40s, wasn't he mm. born? He's 74 now, yeah. right? So, you know, she became monarch in the 50s, so she's been Queen most of his life. I mean, you know, for the so about 70 years, That's exactly. Sure. Yeah. So he grew up, uh, I'm sure, with the Queen being prominent because his mom and everything, and you know, I'm sure she would have been so no, he'll, excited. He'll, to, he'll be there. Yeah. And and these other presidents. He'll be there. If they don't go, it's a snub to England. And if they go in a route to him, that'll be something He'll have say to say a lot. You know. It'd be a I, little awkward for them. I hope they sit him right in the middle of the others with Melania. Be amazing. That would be, that would be the best. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian Craig. Always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. Stand by for an IEO announcement. The initial exchange offering for the S39 token is here. S39 is a community-driven token that has evolved into a prosperous ecosystem, and you can be a part of it. S39 token is a gold peg token and backed up commodities projects. It's available on the Findex Exchange, the digital marketplace that allows users to make transactions with the S39 token. At the Findex Exchange, users can buy and sell all of the assets in the S39 ecosystem. Take advantage of this initial exchange offering today and be a part of all S39 projects. There are over a hundred of them. Go right now to FindexExchange.net. That's F-I-N-D-E-X-X -X, and learn how you can participate. Learn more about the S39 token and read the white paper at S39token.com. Make sure to tell all your friends about S39 token's initial exchange offering too. S39 token, a community-driven token that has evolved into a prosperous ecosystem. From author Edward Nichols comes Insane Angels, available on Amazon. In Insane Angels, meet Michael Flagg, a hard-working, hard-partying Washington, D.C. medical student who wakes up one morning to a life-changing event. He discovers that he has acquired a halo. His girlfriend, Cheryl, suggests that he cash in on it, but Michael is more interested in answers. What caused the halo? Is he a holy man? Or is there something darker at work? To Cheryl, it's an opportunity. To Michael, it's a problem. When a clandestine government government agency is tasked by the president to get to the bottom of the mystery, its deputy director, a rogue agent, in no mood to babysit the haloed man, suddenly sees him as an existential threat. Now, Michael really has a problem, and even worse, unexpectedly begins to believe in the hysteria that now surrounds him. Insane Angels, a thriller that takes a short satirical look at our ego, false religions, love, spies, and redemption. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Insane Angels. Angels from author Edward Nichols, available on Kindle and paperback. The world is a beautiful place just waiting to be explored. The online store, earthswrap.com, assists you to explore the most beautiful places in the world. They carry sleeping accessories, kitchen items, tents, hiking shoes, and much, much more. These are premium quality products that will set you up to explore every part of the world you want to go with ease and preparedness. When you visit the shop, make sure to check out their amazing hiking backpacks, travel bags, outdoor jackets, and hammocks. They offer competitive prices and incredible customer service. 
service. Start shopping today so you can explore tomorrow. Earthswrap.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, a lot of publicity has gone in. There's been a development, okay, guys, about this. A lot has gone into uh, Ron DeSantis flying the illegal migrants to Mm. Martha's Vineyard, and Governor Abbott's been busing people to New York and to D.C. and to Chicago. Um, There's a tragic story. This is a tragic story, really tragic story, out of New York. Mm. A migrant mother in New York City committed suicide Sunday. Terrible story. In a facility sheltering some of the thousands of migrants that have been shipped to the city by other states, Mayor, uh, Mayor Eric Adams revealed. Mayor Adams uh, denied his city is to blame for the death, of course, of course, and instead shifted attention to governors such as Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis, who have been shipping migrants to New York City and Martha's Vineyard recently. The failure was the governors that sent people on a multi-day bus ride without mm. proper food, medical care, or the basic necessities, telling them they had to be treated in this inhumane way. That's the failure, the mayor said. Adams uh, Adams revealed, I should say, um, said he was forbidden by law to disclose where the suicide took place or the identity of the woman. The thousands of asylum seekers we have seen arrive in our city came to this country seeking a better life. Sadly, yesterday, an asylum seeker in one of our facilities took her own life. So we don't even know Mm -mm. if this was a person brought there by DeSantis or Abbott. And... They're not releasing information because probably she wasn't. She wasn't. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't the, fit the narrative they want to put out. There. The tragic news comes as Adams declared a humanitarian crisis in his city after twenty five hundred migrants were bussed there. Um, you know, this is a terrible thing, and I'm not going to pol- politicize the death of this. You know, Donald Trump and conservatives, we are we don't have a problem with immigrants. And I, I respect them. You know, the migrants that come here, you got to think they've left their homes. Their families, whatever they have at home, I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, you know, you know, I'm not from Florida originally, but my parents brought me here when I was a little kid. I didn't have a choice, and uh, I don't yeah. live that far from where I grew. I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> you know, Florida, and uh, Kathy and I don't live too far from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I mean, Kathy uh, grew up here in, in Florida. We don't, you know, and she doesn't live far with me where you grew up from, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, moving to another country and you know, where, where you don't speak the language and everything. That's a pretty big move, and I understand it. And I got a lot of re- – I, I understand this is the greatest country in the world, you know. So I and, – and, and conservatives – it's not that conservatives have a problem with immigration or immigrants, but you cannot have a completely open border and right. allow people to come to your country. Well, like Trump said, you don't you know? have a country if you don't have a border. That's what and makes that's a country true. or the, bo- the lines on the map. that's how liberals are. They're globalists. They they want uh, they I don't think they want borders at all. I mean, you had uh, uh, Brexit left because of um, because they were unified and that was problems for them because once they unified as one big um, what was it called when Europe um, all okay. got together? Oh, the European Union. European Union. They had a problem with Brussels and other other countries bringing in all these illegals. Um, these uh, immigrants to the other countries coming in that way, and they had no say in the matter, and that was a big problem. I think that's what led the whole thing with Nigel Farage is all the immigrants they were bringing in uh, through Brussels and stuff with, and bringing into England. There was like a huge onslaught, yeah. and they had no say, and that's when they're like, look, we got to you know, protect our country here. We have to have some kind of autonomy in protecting our country, and that's what we have, and we've lost our autonomy with Biden. And there's a reason you have to really ask yourself, um, you know, liberals are always big when you argue with them about pointing out that you're, you know, that you're a bigot or you're racist, you're racist because you have restrictions on things. The thing you want to ask liberals is, well, what do you want to restrict? Is there anything that you, do you have any limitations at all on your opinion or is it just a yeah. complete free for all? So you would ask a liberal, well, what do you think is a smart idea for the border? Should it be, should we leave it the way it is or should you have any restrictions? And I tell you nine times out of 10, they'll probably tell you no, no restrictions, just like with abortion. Should there be any restrictions on abortion? 
they probably say no. So that's how they think. And, and their, their reason, I don't understand it, but I, I think it's mostly because it's anti-conservative. It's anti-Trump. Mm -hmm. So whatever we are, they want to be the opposite, even if it makes no sense. That's right. That's right. Now, um, I want to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you so much. And you know, if you would like to become a supporter of the show, a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There's a link to our Patreon mm. page in the description of every episode of the program on whatever platform you're listening to us on. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie. Christine, Gary, Gary's a longtime listener here in South Florida, good guy, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, and Macho. These are our top Patreon supporters. And, you know, there, there are benefits and perks to becoming a Patreon supporter, including commercial-free additions to our podcast episodes and all of that. So click the link in the description of the episode and learn all about becoming a Patreon supporter. Okay, so... Um, I wanted to talk about this thing with Trudeau. Oh, sure. Did you see real quick, though, I watched the Queen's funeral, and I've watched some of the coverage, and because I do like the Queen, and I'm fascinated by all the royal stuff. And they, I watched her funeral. It was very sad, and I don't really like King Charles. I think he's kind of a jerk. But I, I think King Charles just doesn't. But seem right he to was me. crying, and it was very emotional. I mean, you could tell he's very upset about it, which is nice. Um, even Meghan Markle was crying, but she is an actress. But it was interesting. They lowered the Queen into the floor, and she requested that. She planned, they said, her entire funeral in 2017. She planned everything. It was called mm -hmm. Operation London Bridge. And as soon as they said that, that meant the queen is dead and this has to go into effect now. So she wanted it to be televised with her body being lowered into the floor of St. George's uh, Cathedral in Windsor. I have been there. It's a beautiful, beautiful church. It's where Henry VIII is buried next to Jane Seymour, which is very cool. You walk right over his tomb. It's pretty cool. So I think she did that because I think she wanted the country and the world to have closure and to be symbolic of her time is over and it's now time yeah. to move on. It was It's like a visual of everybody saw her being lowered into the bottom chamber. This is it. You know, that's it. She's done. And I think that was a very selfless thing for her to do for her son and for her family to be like, my time is over and it's time to move on. And um, I really always liked the queen. I think she always put other her country ahead of her own needs. And I think she was a selfless leader. But I know a lot of people have issues with the queen, but I love her. I thought she was great. I'm sad she's gone. But she lived a very full life, very healthy person. Obviously, you know, well, something happened. I mean, she was almost know, 100 years old. You can't live listen, forever. You know, the but thing she about had it, a very interesting life. I the, mean, you know, okay. met everybody. Today... And, I haven't watched 10 seconds of the funeral coverage today, okay? I'm it was good. Busy. They had to walk but, far. These but here, a, a couple of things about this stuff. With the, I don't want to talk about the queen too much because I know it's been overdone in American media. Today, the funeral most definitely should be covered. Um, for sure. It's historic. I, I thought it was, it was cool to see David Beckham waited in line for 12 that hours. That was very awesome. To, to yeah. go do that, you know? And I was yeah. wondering, you know, he's a, he's a, a knight. He served. Yeah, he was all... Upset. I thought there'd be more celebrities. Yeah, uh, Sharon Osbourne uh, flew over and got in line and waited. And there was a couple other celebrities that I wasn't familiar with that I read about that were their British celebrities that did it. Um, but, you know, a couple things about this, and it, I think it's an, an important thing. The, the funeral should most definitely have been covered today. Obviously, her death should have been covered. American oh, media, yeah. I think, overdid it quite a bit, okay? She's not disagree, our queen. Um, it's in a history. They, they overdid the longest – Ruling. Monarch. I understand. I they they did too much, in my opinion. But here here's the thing, though. Um, when you saw the way that these leftists on television in this uh, country reacted about anti-colonialism, they want reparations from England. You know, they have no shame. These we people. were watching this the other day on TV, and you and you had said to me, Kathy, liberals just live in the past too much. They live in the past. They're angry. Yeah. They're bitter. And uh, you know, here's the deal with slavery and colonialism and all that. Every single continent has had slavery in its past, and some of it's obviously still goes on today with sex slavery and 
all this stuff. Every continent has had slavery in their past. It was not invented here. Okay, you, it, they had slaves in the Renaissance. I didn't know that. I was reading a book on the Renaissance. They had slaves then, indentured servants, all this stuff. One of my ancestors I was learning about, uh, uh, Pierre Thibodeau, came to Nova Scotia, and he was an indentured servant. He was a farmer, and he had to work it off his passage here. This is, I know that's not the same as being a slave for life. I get that. But slavery has been a part of every culture it was talked about in the Bible. They had slaves in Rome, people that were slaves for their whole life. It's not a good thing, but we did not invent it in this country. And I don't, and it's, it's over. It's been over a long time. Um, and I don't understand the anger that people have towards it, um, the bitterness that they have towards white people that had nothing to do. With, my family wasn't even here back then. Okay. My mom came from Canada. My dad's parents came from, um, Canada and Italy. So my family wasn't even in this country before 1905. Uh, you know, I'll tell you so exactly I don't, what and it is, most Kathy. people are like that. Most you know, people that live here, black and white do not have a connection to that time no. period. Most no. of the people died in that war. Well, I mean, people died here's, to here's, free the slaves. The, the, reason, the reason that it's you ridiculous. see this, it, it's, and I, this sounds like a ridiculous thing to say. And, and the first time I heard, I heard someone say this once years ago. And the first time I heard someone say this, I thought that is so ridiculous. And, and now I understand it. It's spot on right on the money. Yeah. There's a such thing as having too much education. And, you know, it used to be back in the olden days when people went to school, even in college, they learned a skill. They learned a skill. Even if they were in, in school like in the 50s and 60s and 70s, a lot of girls went to college for what was called an MRS degree, a Mrs. Or okay. to be a secretary. Yeah, to be a secretary or a wife. They learned how to type. But even back in that era, people went and learned a skill. They learned how to be an accountant. They learned how to be an attorney or a school teacher or a pharmacist. Now what happens, kids go to college to learn how to be a liberal and, and a radical liberal activist, and they don't learn any yeah. skills other than that. And, uh, you know, and, and they and, – and They're now, recruiting their own little yeah, liberal army. And now they, they're bringing it into like grade school and high school and middle school and everything. And that's, that's the problem. Yeah. You know, our education system yeah. is a mess. Like I was reading a story here. Well, listen, let's take a break. And then I got something on this that I, I was going to bring up. Okay. Uh, but I'll do it after the break because I don't have time to do it before the break. You're listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Now, we are on all pod, uh, podcast platforms, by the way. Uh, including Spotify and iHeartRadio, and our podcast is even on Audible. But if there is a podcast platform, we are on it. So uh, make sure that you listen to us on whatever podcast platform you use for your podcast. I got a message from a listener the other day. They were on a, on a drive. They were binge listening to the podcast. Oh, love it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty awesome. cool. Listen, we'll take our break and be right back. Don't go anywhere. There's no doubt about it. We live in a digital age. And if you own a business, digital marketing is your key to success. The book, Shortcuts to Digital Marketing, available on Amazon, is the perfect book for anyone looking to learn new skills or hone existing ones when it comes to digital marketing. In Shortcuts to Digital Marketing, you will learn everything you need to know about digital marketing, the latest updates and tools, and how to become a leading digital marketer. It's filled with insights and strategies for business owners, marketing professionals, students, and anyone else looking to hone their current skills and get up to speed on the latest in digital marketing. In this must-read book, you will find a website design guide as well as different digital marketing tools. Learn to plan and execute your digital marketing strategies as well as learn to create videos, content, and a social media content calendar. And that's just the beginning. Take your business to the next level and order your copy of this practical book, Shortcuts to Digital Marketing, available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon. Like many parents these days, you may be homeschooling your children. But did you know there are ways you can make it easy and fun? The book, Homeschooling Simplified, from author Amber M. Schimmel, is the perfect book for any mom who's looking for more joy and simplicity in her homeschooling life. Whether you've been homeschooling for 10 years or 10 minutes, this must-read book has fun and practical ways to bring more ease and simplicity into your day. Homeschooling Simplified has simple homeschool daily schedules, flowcharts for circle time, as well 
wellness tips on how to spend more time together, including a step-by-step guide to create homeschooling portfolios. There are chapters on circle time, homeschooling in the teen years, and how to be a working mom while homeschooling. There's something for everyone. It's written by a mom of five and university professor who has been homeschooling all her children for over 13 years. This is a practical and relatable guide for moms in every stage of life. Order your copy right now on Amazon. Homeschooling Simplified from author Amber M. Schimmel. The Vietnam War had a huge impact on our nation and world. There were many stories to tell from the men who fought in those battles. The book from author Jim Pertell, Vietnam, Soldier Stories and Songs, available as an audiobook on Amazon, has stories and songs from the Vietnam War that are engaging and authentic. The 37 stories and original songs speak to the Vietnam veteran experience in combat in Vietnam, the unsettled POW MIA issue, and the difficult re-entry back into the United States for Vietnam veterans. There are also stories and songs about PTSD, veteran homelessness, veteran suicide, Agent Orange, and stolen valor. Author Jim Pertell is a combat Vietnam veteran, having served as a medic with the infantry in 1968 through 69, and is one of the most prolific songwriters of the Vietnam experience. This must-read book is perfect for Vietnam veterans, veterans, spouses, family members of Vietnam veterans, veterans, military historians, songwriters, and those interested in how songs are formed and short story lovers. Be sure to add this audiobook to your collection. Vietnam, Soldier Stories and Songs from author and Vietnam veteran Jim Pertell. Available in audiobook on Amazon.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um... There's a video that has just come out of Trudeau, the Canadian prime minister in – is he in London for the funeral? And he's had some drunken, bizarre yeah, – at a London hotel. M- meltdown. Last night. Yeah. I tell you, he's – He was he, singing he Bohemian Rhapsody star. and just got he's drunk. He's at like a piano bar, some weird piano, and a guy is playing a Queen song, Bohemian Rhapsody. And he's sitting here, it's on the Daily Mail, and he's singing. Uh, you know, it's just in poor taste. I don't know what he's thinking to go out in public. Anytime you go out in public, you're going to assume, especially if you're a well-known person, oh, yeah. people can film you and upload it to the internet. Absolutely. And uh, so he's out singing. Maybe he just had a few drinks and didn't realize what he was doing. You know, we lose our inhibitions, but he's an idiot. He's an infant. He's a child. He's a moron. I can't stand the guy. And my family in Canada hates him too, and they're just stuck with him. Well, you I know, guess. I'll tell you. Okay, when <laughs> when you're the prime minister, being a prime minister of these countries isn't like being president of the United States. Although we don't, you know, our president's so checked out, it's it's hard to make this normal comparison. But a prime minister of a country like Canada can go out and be drunk and be a lunatic like this and all the time cares. because there's not yeah. that much responsibility to the job. You you understand what I mean? So that it's 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 almost like a he's almost like a figurehead. But he is. But it's a very bad look because I will tell you, it is bad, in Canada, yeah. they love the queen. She's on their money. They love the queen. In fact, there's a lot of English traditions that they still have. I know because my family does them that are British traditions, and they consider themselves still like British subjects. A, a lot of people that live there are European and English. And even though they're like their own country, they still they're still a part of England somehow, aren't they? Like a, they have the she's on the money. Are they a they're commonwealth? A common, they're a commonwealth nation. So they're yeah, still yeah. like part of England in that sense. They love the queen there. They love the royal family, and it's well. A huge they don't part. like Trudeau. I don't know and any Canadians they, that like Trudeau. No, and and this is just going to make them hate. You know, all that more. business what with the jackass. truckers last year and everything, yeah. uh, and uh, people do not jerk. like Trudeau in Canada. No. No. And I'll tell you this about uh, Queen's Bohe- uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I love Queen, but I do not like Bohemian Rhapsody. I think it's just overplayed. I mean, yeah, I think Wayne's it's World just destroyed that song that you've know. heard so many times. It's a great song. Love Freddie Mercury, probably 
I think him and Steve Perry have the you know, greatest I, voices ever. Now, I, I was a little bit younger then, but I was an adult when um, Freddie Mercury died. I had no idea yeah. that Freddie Mercury was dead. I mean, was gay until he died. I knew he was dead. I had no idea Freddie Mercury was gay until he was dead Nobody and he died really of AIDS. Out. I didn't even know George Michael was gay, okay? Yeah. And I had seen and, him in concert well, with the way I'm. I had no I just, clue. I just assumed Queen was called Queen because of the Queen of England, well, and maybe that's the case. I think it's a double entendre. But I, I think there was a little inside joke there. Yeah. But Freddie Mer- Mercury, I, I think, is like the you know greatest voice. I, I love, I love, um, I love Freddie Mercury, and that movie about him was pretty good. Very good. Pretty With good. Malik, um, yeah, the yeah the guy very from Very good movie. Mr. It was, it was pretty good. I love Queen, but not Bohemian Rap. Uh, yeah, I, I think R- Wayne's World destroyed that song. Well, now, Trudeau's an idiot anyway. So now, um, he's, he's an embarrassment to the country. You know, Biden, this is a, this is a crazy thing. We were talking last week that um, a, the Amtrak workers, the, mm. you know, they were going on strike. Listen to this. Joe Biden's deal to stop the rail strikes could fall apart within days as the workers in the rail union uh, want a better agreement when it comes to sick leave and days off, despite receiving a 24 percent pay raise. And they also gave Jeez. them back pay. Uh, I guess they gave them back pay. Oh, my goodness. With the. Um, with the raise, like, okay, you got paid in the past, but it didn't have the raise, so they're going to back pay. Uh, and, you know, here, here's the thing. Um, I just, I learned a little bit of something I did not know about involving the Great Depression. Um, I did not know this, but I was reading a book recently on the Great Depression, and one of the causes of the Depression, there were a lot of causes for it, but part of the uh, uh, cause of the Great Depression was people weren't taking trains as often as they used to because people had, had cars, cars yeah. you know, people cars. Car, you know, people were starting to have cars and yeah. the roads were getting paved oh, yeah. and the railroads losing money because people were not using them for transportation as much because they were getting cars True. was one of the economic hits in the United States that caused the great depression. It may not have been the biggest one, but it was a big one. Oh, I'm and, sure it was huge because you know, the railway was a huge yeah. industry. And the, the, then. the rails, are how a lot – I don't think people realize I, – I know you get stuck at a freight train every once in a while. Like when I go to the radio station in the morning, I time it. Oh. I have to go over two railroad tracks right. to get to the radio so station. Hit the train? Yeah. I know. I got, I got it down pat what time the trains come, so I leave and got everything timed out. Yeah. So I'm, But every once in a while, I'll be a few minutes early or a couple minutes late, and I'm done. And I, I know you see the mile-long trains, but I don't think people realize how much – uh, is transported by train so far as goods oh, and yeah. fuel and everything you buy in the store. It's massive oh, beyond yeah. imagination. Oh, yeah. We depend on them quite a bit. And, and you know, the uh, Amtrak has been subsidized by the government forever, probably because it goes back to the Great Depression era. But, you know, these guys got a 24% pay raise. And, and during a recession, how many of you got a 24 cent raise and they got a 24% raise on their salary or their hourly pay and they're still griping? And the reason they are is because Biden, the union man, was so quick to make a deal with them. So they felt, well, he caved. He gave us a deal so quick. Why don't we, why don't we just keep asking for more? He's going to give it to us. And that's, that's what's happened. And it's really a, it really takes a lot of nerve. Like a, a few weeks ago, these teachers up north were going to go on strike. Yeah. The teachers have been out of the classroom for like two years in some of these liberal mm-hmm. communities, and I just think a lot of them do, don't want to go back to work, and they just got off for the whole summer off. And yeah, I, there was a time when unions did some good about 100 years ago, okay, when there were no really structure on how employees were treated, but that's a long time ago. The only thing unions do now is cause trouble. Well, one thing we know for certain, liberals destroy anything they touch. <laughs> I mean, that's a given. Anything they touch, they destroy. They, they, they just can't help it because they're angry people. They're never happy. It's never enough. That's for sure. They're never satisfied. They're never satiated. They always want more. Mm-hmm. Like this, they, they, want, they, they want the 24, you know, that's not enough. They want more than that. They, you give them what they want. Like people want reparations, right? Fine. If they ever give them that, some places well, I think have, you know, tw- then they're going to want something else. Tw- okay, great. Now give me this. A 
four percent raise is insane. I mean, I that, agree. And, and they it's got ridiculous. it, and they still say, "Well, that's not good enough." Most people, I think, every year get what like a four percent raise, like a cost of living. Mm-hmm. They might get a four or five percent raise every year. I'm not. I'm not sure. I think with when I was teaching. I would get like a, you you know every year you get a higher level and and it wasn't much like a couple hundred mm-hmm. dollars and then there were certain tiers like after ten years you get a big bump you know yeah. what I mean like now, there were certain levels you had to meet yeah like same thing as you were like a flight attendant or there's certain levels but it's not yeah. a twenty four twenty four percent that's insane increase that's, that's insane just yeah. for nothing other than griping now uh, one of our podcast listeners did something that was dishonest. I, I don't know who, who it was, but I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. Uh-oh. I was talking to our travel agent for our MAGA cruise that uh, we do on the Steve Kane show. Yeah. Ian from cruise and travel depot. I was talking to him yesterday and one of the podcast listeners called him and said that if you call that, I said this on the podcast, that if you call and say you're a podcast listener, that uh, I guarantee you'll sit at the table with me. That's not what I said. Uh, the table is only so large. I said that if you are from the podcast, get in touch with me privately through a DM or call me off the air or something, and I'll make sure that you are sitting as close to me as possible right. because I'm getting ready soon to start yeah. doing the, the, the dining. Only, the table only seats like 10 people, and it's going to be Brian. First of all, half of it's taken up by like family or almost half. You got well, Emily yeah. and my mom, my stepfather. And you, so that's three seats right there that are going to be sitting with you. So Our daughter's that, bringing a friend. And then you, and then Emily's friend. Yeah. That's five seats right there. So there's only like yeah. five seats so, left. So listen, um, <laughs> I think they knew I didn't say that. I would, I'll make sure that you're sitting as close to me as possible if you want to sit close to me. Maybe you're coming and you don't want to sit close to me. But uh, yes, things get back to me, okay? I, <laughs> I'm on top of all this stuff. Oh my gosh. But I know, isn't that crazy? These people need to get a life. Yeah, I know. Now I'm looking forward to the cruise. Quite, quite honestly, you know, yeah. um, I could use a vacation. And you guys out there, you are all invited. We're going to have a great time. Yeah. Uh, this is our first cruise. I don't know if it's two years or three years because of COVID. We were shut down for a couple years, and the well, la- our last I cruise was in nineteen. That's three. But, but I can't remember what year in twenty. It was December. Or what month. I think it was December. De- yeah, I don't think I'd have taken a cruise in December. You never know. Maybe I did, but it was in 2019. We'll so yeah, Ian. so it's, it's been about, about three years. Yeah. yeah. Well, this will actually be January 2023. Yeah, so it'll be three years. Yeah. So it'll be like two and a half, close to three years since yeah. we've had since I've had a vacation, and um, also since we've had one of our cruises because of the COVID shutdowns with the cruise industry, and they did lift the uh, vaccine mandate, and we have had so many of Which you is out amazing. there. Uh, sign up to join us on our yeah. cruise, and I and I'm glad you did. We we have a good 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 time. I just got an email from a listener who's going on the cruise, who went on a past cruise just a few minutes ago during the show. They uh, this is to me and Steve, Brian and Steve. We're looking forward to the January Trump cruise. We hope to see some friends we made on the last cruise. Amazing. And uh, yeah, one thing I know Ron about now, I've never been on a cruise, but. Um, one thing I do know, cause my mom has been on quite a few and my dad, oh, yeah, I've been on a lot of when them. people go and you and, and stuff, when people go on cruises, the friends you make on cruises are friends you keep for life. You mm. do people keep in touch. They communicate. I know people that get together with people because you're on the cruise with them for a week and you really get to know people. And there are people that you will meet that you will stay friends with for the rest of your life. And people even get together during the rest of the year, they might find out they live near each other or they might even, my mom met somebody on, she went on some cruise in Europe and she met somebody, I think it was in Italy or so a long time ago. And she kept in touch with quite a few people and she was traveling somewhere and she went and had lunch with this woman that she'd met on the cruise and they write letters and stay in touch. You make friends for life. And if you go on the cruises, I have to tell you a lot of the same people repeat, come every year and you will see them again the next year. And and that's what's fun about it is like, it's like old home week, you know, you get to go on and you might see somebody, oh, that you were on with the last cruise. And it's like seeing them all over again. And you establish well, you know, those nice on the, friendships. On the last cruise, there was a listener who was on the cruise who came with me coincidentally on the first cruise I went on when I was 18 years old. I went on a Star Trek cruise. Oh, that's crazy. And, and this person, she and her husband, they were on the Star Trek cruise I was on. And it was so, that was 1989. I was 18 years old. 
and we were talking about things that happened on that cruise. We were together the whole. We didn't even know each other. Isn't that funny? And no, and you know, yeah. We've well, been on a lot of cruises. What happens on these cruises is what Kathy says. We have a cruise family, and every cruise it grows larger. Yeah. And a lot of people are coming alone, right? They're coming single because the cruise line has a huge discount for single cruisers. And mm-hmm. um, but you're not gonna. They're not you gonna be, be alone. alone. They're no, gonna be, be with alone. this great MAGA group, yeah. and it's it's a lot of fun. And you know, I started doing this cruise that we did. Uh, I, the first one we did. Was we looked? It was how many years ago, Kathy? Oh my gosh, five, or five seven? or six years ago, yeah. something like this. It was the first one, and people think I'm joking, but I organized the first cruise be, uh, because I had not had time off in a long time, mm-hmm. and um, Steve. Well, and you thought it'd be nice to do for the listeners. Yeah, too. Steve didn't want to do a cruise. Um, he didn't want to do a cruise for, and I and I talked him into it. And we did it. And it was a long weekend cruise. It was a Friday. Like we days, came back yeah. on a Monday. Yeah. And then the second one we did was a whole week. And they're all a week long now. And when we did that first week long cruise was the first time I had an entire week off work in 20 years. It was when our daughter came home from the hospital when she was born. It was the last time I had a week off. True. And I look forward to it. And I, I let my hair down a little bit. And uh, I think you look forward drink to a little too booze. much. I drink a little too you much. Like the drinks. In fact, Brian will call me all the time. Um, from the ship and he'll send me pictures of all the fancy drinks you're drinking and you'll be like, look at this drink and you'll send me the picture like oh my really cool and I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah. take it easy. But you'll say to me, oh, I only had a couple sips. Now I'll I, say- that, that I tried something else. I do, I have, yeah, because the drinks are included and I, I got this one drink on one of the cruises. It was this huge margarita, massive margarita and it had two Coronas turned upside down, bottles of Corona turned upside down in the drink, one in each side of the margarita. Oh my goodness. That's it, it, but it was included, I didn't have to pay for it, it was included in the drink package. I had one sip of it, it tasted awful. Yeah, I, I don't think beer and I said, goes no. well with margarita. It's no, it yuck. doesn't, it doesn't, but I, I didn't Might care look cool, but because yeah. I, the drink was included, the drinks are included and I'd have to pay for it, so I didn't care. That's somebody and, who wants to get really smashed with like one drink. Yeah, right. Boom. And, uh, <laughs> one drink and done. On the the last cruise, I had way too much to drink the first night. That's I must true. say, there was there was one guy who was on the though. cruise, and he he's a cop, and uh, he had traveled down from out of state, and we were talking about he was they, they were asking about the drink package, and I was talking about the drink package, and I'd made reference. I said, yeah, that's why I I get you know top shelf liquor. I said if I'm gonna do a tequila shot, I'm gonna get Patron, and he's like tequila shot. He's like yeah. He said he never had one. I said, you never had a tequila shot. This guy's a police officer. I've never officer. had one either. And I said, really? I said, well, you got to go have a tequila shot. You got the drink back? Let's go. <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of tequila shots. And, um, oh, my gosh. And I, it, was, it was crazy how many tequila shots we had. So the rest of the week, like for three or four days, I just drank Avion. You know, I didn't drink anything for like the next three or four days. You have then, to detox. Yeah, and then towards the end, I was finally sobering up, and then went back to the martinis. Oh my but it goodness. was, uh, I know, it took it was a crazy. while to metabolize all that tequila. I the, guess. Oh my gosh! On one of the on one of the cruises that uh, we went on, uh, at the last minute, our da- our daughter who goes with me, she couldn't go, and um, I so I had the I had the the space, so I took Kathy's dad. Yeah, he had a great time. Yeah, he went with us. He was there for a week, so he and I stayed in the cabin. And um, it was just, this was this was crazy embarrassing. So I was up very late talking with some listeners in one of the bars, and we're having a good time and till the bar closed. And we and the bar closed. It was like two, three o'clock in the morning, and we left. And I had left my room key <laughs> on the bar, okay, because that's what you use for the yeah. drinks. You know, I left my room key on the bar, and I didn't want to go back to the room and wake up. Your dad, because it was like three thirty in the yeah, morning, four o'clock yeah. in the morning. So I went to. I found no problem. I go to the front desk and I said, "Hey, I left my room key at the bar. Can you let me into the bar?" And and uh, they said, "Well, um, okay, we can do that, but you have to be able to prove that that's your room." And I, they said, "Do you have ID?" And I, my wall. I didn't carry ID on the cruise. My driver's license was right. in there. So they said, okay. So they had security guards go with me to the room. And they said, well, walk, we'll have the security guys walk you back to the room. And uh, then you can show them your driver's license so they know that it's your room, right? It's like four in the morning. So we're walking down the hallway. I've got three or four security guards walking behind me, which is very strange, you know. And the door opens, and it's a listener, a lady. She stuck her head. She's like, oh, Brian, I'm sorry. And she shut the door, and I'm walking by. She sees me with like these three or four security guards. And I'm thinking, what does this woman think? So the next day I saw her at well, dinner. Well, she was up late too. 
Yeah, I guess so. But she she thought I was in trouble. I don't know what I did see. So or the, being escorted, but like yeah. security. So the next day at dinner, I told her. I said, "No, what happened was," and I yeah. told her the whole story. She's like, "Oh, okay." I was like, "What did you?" I said, "What did you think happened?" Well, first I said I wanted to talk to you about you know last night with the security guards, and she says, "Oh, Brian, you don't have to. That's your business. You don't have to tell me." <laughs> I was like, "No, I want to tell you." <laughs> so we have a good oh, time. You're you're all invited, guys. I mean, I, I, let me give out Ian's number though, just in case you you, you guys out there want to make a reservation and 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 yeah. have a great time. If you're on the fence, definitely you know don't hesitate. It's really worth yeah. It. Ian's number is five six one two four four fifty seven seventy nine. He's our travel agent. Five six one two four four. Excuse me, fifty seven seventy nine. And and join us. Um, I wanted to talk about this last thing though. Okay, with um. Biden on 60 Minutes. I talked about this a lot on the radio mm. today. And um, th- this was a big deal. Biden was on 60 Minutes and did this interview, which was a devastating interview. I'm not going to go through the whole thing now because I talked about it for hours on the radio this morning. So I don't want to recap everything I did. You can go on YouTube and watch you know, the video from this morning and hear me talk about it. This was the very first time that I have seen 60 Minutes, which is 60 Minutes out of the liberal media is kind of like the liberal – it's it's like the – I know not from our perspective, but from the liberal media perspective, 60 Minutes is like the the most credible of all, right? And that, yeah, you they're know, at the top of the food chain. Top of the food sure. chain in the liberal mainstream media. In their minds. In their minds. I would say so. I have never seen 60 Minutes ask a difficult question of a Democrat president ever. Democrats go on 60 Minutes to – rehabilitate their reputations, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not go on and make it worse. And Joe Biden was there and, well, well what do you say to those that say you're, you're unfit? Well, he says, look at me. Well, well we do. He we, said, watch we, me. Watch me. Watch me. What you a know. creep. So, you know, you look at all He's the- a creeper. And they asked, they didn't ask questions as tough as I would or you would or Tucker or Hannity would with Biden. But for 60 Minutes, that was a hardcore attack interview on a Democrat sitting president of the United States, something they've never done before. And what that was about was 60 Minutes with Biden last night. The media are going to start to be critical of Biden in a big, weak way. I know they're already showing bad things well, on inflation. I think they're waiting until after the, the November Well, this was before the election. I know, but they don't want to do anything to upset. They're already in trouble uh, they don't want to do anything to upset the elections for themselves in November. So I think they're holding back a little bit. I know 60 Minutes said this, but in general, I think overall they're holding back a little bit because they they don't want to lose any seats in November. And, and bashing Biden right now would be, you know, premature. But I, I do believe um, in 2024 – they will really ramp it up, and I'm sure they'll have plenty of well, ammunition wait, this to do is, so because well, they don't want him to run again. What he's I think, just, he's no oh, good that, for them. Well, that's what 60 Minutes was doing. I think what 60 Minutes was doing like giving them was, was telling the other media, okay, it's maybe. okay now. Yeah. Be critical of Biden. Because we you can did start it. to do it. Yeah, yeah, maybe. You're and right. and they were the first ones to do it. They're the credible ones in their mind. He's a, he's and a joke. We're, we're going to start to – CNN really has been doing a lot of – Negative reporting on Biden so far as inflation, and that was a big topic on who's, sixty minutes. Who's last time. taking over Don Lemon's spot? It has not been announced. So who's there now? He's still there. Uh, he I think still... they're going to have a rotating filler, or they uh, might expand Anderson Cooper or something. I, I really wish they'd bring in some new people. I really don't like when networks just shuffle around the same tired yeah, people. The deck chairs on the Titanic. You know exactly. I, I exactly. I really wish they'd bring in some new exciting people. Um, somebody that nobody's ever heard of that's a great reporter and is great on TV. Yeah. There's plenty of people in these larger markets, like in Los Angeles or New yeah. York or whatever, they can bring in or Miami. That would be good and exciting. I and and you know I don't care what he says. That is a total demotion when you go from having a prime time show that has uh, that's an eponymous with your name oh, on yeah. the title. Okay, Don Lemon tonight. That is your show. And then you get moved, and you know he hates going to hate getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. He probably goes to bed at four o'clock in the morning right now. Mm-hmm. Now he's got to get up at four four thirty in the morning, which he's going to hate, and and go to work and be there and be fresh and he's exciting. not going to be able to do it. He has two other co hosts. I don't think so. I don't think he'll be able. To, it's definitely not going to fit in with his lifestyle. I can tell you, he's a big it would partier. be it, you know when you he's me, going to hate every minute of I, it. I've been in mornings for so long. If I went if. If I move to nights all of a sudden, it would be a big change to everything in my life. It he would turn your life gonna, upside down. They're trying to do, I guess, like a Fox and Friends. 
he is not going to like sharing the spotlight with these two women. He he had that show all to himself where he had control of the guests and it was his show. He got to and talk for, all the time. For him to say that he's not being demoted, he's crazy. They are mo- getting ready to move him out there just writing out his contract. Because yeah. if you're on a show like that that has three-person panel, it's a lot easier to replace somebody and it not be – it's more seamless that way. If you have like three hosts – and one of them leaves, it's not the end of the world. They bring in another guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's an easier transition. So they're That's just right. transitioning him. He's on his way out the door. Trust well, me. listen, we're all out of time for today, but thanks everyone for tuning in. My name's Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co host Kathy. We will talk to you next time. Hear that music? That means it's Christmas shopping season again. And when you're Christmas shopping, there's no better place to go than MyPillow.com. And with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, you will find the lowest prices ever on top MyPillow products. Right now, order your MyPillow My Slippers for $90 off in all sizes and colors for both men and women. The MyPillow that started it all is just $19.98. The 3-inch MyPillow mattress topper is 50% off. The MyPillow Pet Bed is 50% off too. There's also incredible savings on the six-piece MyPillow towel set, the 100% Giza cotton dream sheets, the MyPillow bathrobes. Whatever special you see at MyPillow.com, you can take advantage of it with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout at MyPillow.com. You can also order over the phone, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane, K-A-N-E.